After viewing Windows Subsystem for Linux WSL installation on Windows 10, 11, and Server 2022, you now have several WSL instances installed in your system. The video Mount a drive or volume to an NTFS folder in Windows 11 and Windows 10 motivated you to consolidate your WSL drives to high performing, high capacity volumes mounted to NTFS folders. We're going to cover how to do that right now. Let's get started. As previously covered, WSL is a feature that provides tight OS integration to allow users to run a GNU Linux environment directly on Windows without the computational overhead of a traditional virtual machine. By default, WSL distribution installations are user-based and installed to the user's profile. The files are located under C colon backslash users backslash username backslash app data backslash local backslash packages backslash distribution name. The associated virtual hard drive in VHDX format is under the local state directory with the default name ext4.vhdx. If file extensions are hidden, go to View, Show, and check File Name Extensions. For Windows 10, go to View and check File Name Extensions. When WSL distributions are first installed, all distributions virtual hard drives will have the same name. Open Windows Terminal or a PowerShell session. Type WSL dash dash list to see your currently installed distributions. If you see the default help information, WSL is not installed. Type WSL dash dash shutdown to terminate all running instances and verify with WSL dash dash list dash dash running. To export a tarball tar file, do the following. Unregister. To export a VHDX file, use the dash dash VHD option and change the output file extension to .vhdx. Unregister. Type WSL dash dash list to verify the exported distributions are no longer showing. Navigate to the export destination folders to see the exported files. Open Windows Terminal or PowerShell session. To import a tar file, type the command shown. It is important to specify a distribution directory when importing a tar file since the imported VHDX will have the default file name ext4.vhdx. Importing a VHDX file is the same as importing a tar file. However, replace the tar extension with VHDX and append the dash dash VHD option. Like importing a tar file, when importing a VHDX file, it's best to import into a folder with a distribution name since the import operation will copy the contents of the exported VHDX into a new ext4.vhdx. In this scenario, we're going to export directly to the location we want our VHDX file to reside permanently with the name we want the imported distribution to use. Export to a VHDX file. Unregister the current distribution installation. Now we're going to perform the import in place operation. This operation uses the exported VHDX file in its current location with its current file name. 
If the distribution VHDX file names are different from each other, then multiple VHDX files can be placed in the same folder if desired. You can also manually copy an exported VHDX file from an exported location to its final destination and then perform the import in place operation. Export the distribution. Make a new folder and copy the VHDX file. Optionally, generate and compare SHA-256 hashes to ensure file integrity. Unregister the old distribution. Perform the import in place. Type WSL dash dash list to verify the import operation. You start an imported WSL distribution in the same manner as you normally would. Notice, however, it now logs in as the root user. This is a side effect of the export import operation. There are two ways to log on with your account. Specify the user when starting a distribution. Create an Etsy WSL.conf file that specifies the default user. This is Microsoft's preferred method. Start the distribution as the root user. Create an forward slash etc forward slash wsl.conf file using vi nano or vs code and add the following lines. Any changes made to wsl.conf requires a termination of the modified distribution or a shutdown of the WSL subsystem. Now, when starting the imported distribution, it will log in as the user specified in the forward slash etc forward slash wsl.conf file instead of logging in as the root user. When unregistering a distribution, the original source VHDX file is deleted and all data, settings, and software associated with that distribution will be permanently lost. Therefore, it is imperative that the distribution is exported first prior to performing an unregister command. User WSL settings for each installed distribution can be found in the registry under the H key current user, software, Microsoft, Windows, current version, LXSS key. Notice that the import in place distributions have a string value appropriately named VHD file name. With PowerShell, you can navigate into and list the contents of the registry key just as you would any file folder. When exporting, the file name path must be first created. If the path is not present, WSL will not create the path and it will throw an error. WSL will, however, create the directory that is specified at the end of the directory path in the install location path when performing an import operation. You cannot export a distribution and then do an import on the same system using the same distribution name without first unregistering. Attempting an import or an import in place without unregistering the distribution will result in an error. You can, however, import a distribution that was exported and not unregistered if the imported distribution name differs from the exported distribution name. You can export as many times as you like to different locations and formats prior to unregistering. Be sure to type WSL dash dash shutdown between each export operation. Notice the file size difference between the TAR and VHDX files. During an import or an import in place operation, 
The target distribution name is arbitrary. You can call it whatever you want. After an import operation, you can export again if desired or necessary. And you can export and import a distribution as many times as you like. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.